So this is our new top bar hive design, and um, this is uh, this is mainly Tony's design. And we just want to introduce this hive, and then we are going to have a series of instructional videos on how to build one of these hives, and we'll also let you know what the um, what the benefits are to building a hive like this. We're going to let the people know why this is the best hive ever. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's the best hive. Best hive ever. So we have a board on the bottom, very thin, to help keep the, the lid as lightweight as possible. Um, inside is a layer of goose down. Um, that's to insulate the bees to keep them warm in the winter. And it's also to help keep them from getting too hot in the summer. <coughs> That's goose down in there, people. Okay, so underneath the lid, we have this frame. Um, this is part of the feeding system that um, actually Tony is going to explain to you in a few minutes. Um, so I'm going to set this aside. So the purpose of this sheet is to keep the bees inside the hive while still allowing ventilation and moisture to flow out of the hive. I'm going to take that off. You can just use an old it's naked now. sheet for that. All right, so these spaces in between the top bars here, um, those, that, that allows ventilation to flow um, from the inside to the outside. It also allows the bees to get up into their winter feeder, which will, uh, you know, continue, uh, which we'll explain more about later. So these are the top bars. Okay, so here we have the front of the hive and our three entrance holes. You want to have enough holes to where enough, you know, you want to you have enough uh, space for the bees to get in and out to where they're not crowded, but you don't want too much space because it invites uh, robbery. Ooh, so, robbery. Oh, yeah. So this is the um, mini awning here of the hive, and it's slanted, just uh, slanted to... Basically slanted in a manner that will allow rain and moisture to uh, to be um, uh, directed away from the hive rather than inside the hive. You don't want too much moisture inside your hive. That's <laughs> those are the basic parts of the hive. I know. I don't need you to do that. Those are the basic parts of the hive, and now I am going to um, let Tony explain to you how the feeding system works. We're excited to show you how to build this hive. I'm going to show you how the feeding stick. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how the feeding system works. Okay. Take off my glasses. Okay, get ready. There's a, there's a warm weather and cold weather feeding system in this hive. And I'll go ahead and show you the warm weather system first. So bees only take up uh, nectar or sugar water if the temperature is I think about 55 degrees or warmer I'm pretty sure that's an accurate uh, accurate number right there an accurate statistic so you will need a, a system for feeding them uh, when it's warm and for when it's cold so this is the warm weather one and this is this is really simple okay all this is a, a half gallon jar that screws up underneath there's a um, the lid is actually glued up into the guts of the hive here so it can accommodate this jar. See, glue the lid up in here. It holds really well. Bees cannot grip glass. If a bee goes down in here and has no way to climb back out, they will drown in the food in the jar. This is a just a rolled up piece of aluminum screen that makes a little tube here that acts as a lattice or a ladder that the bees can then climb down or up on to access nectar and then be able to get back out of the jar. So this is a pretty pretty straightforward, inexpensive feeding system that yours truly has come up with. And I think I think it'll work pretty well. <laughs> yours truly? Now I'm gonna go ahead and, and stick it in there. I'm gonna go ahead and stick it back in the hive. Okay. Wait a minute.
The reason why this design, in my opinion, is superior to putting a feeder right at the entrance is because this system allows for you to feed the bees and have a robber screen over the entrance at the same time. Because, as any good beekeeper knows, feeding oftentimes triggers robbing. And robbing can be devastating for a hive if left unchecked. This is probably a way of addressing that problem. We'll see, we haven't even tested it yet, but I don't see why it wouldn't address that problem because you can use it in conjunction with a robber screen. Let's go ahead and check out the winter time feeder, the cold weather feeding system. In the winter time, you will go ahead and remove the sheet that prevents the bees from moving up through the bars and instead lay down a piece of newspaper then you put this frame over the newspaper and center it right over the slats in between the bars. Then what you're going to do is pour a bunch of white sugar into this frame that will sit on top of the newspaper and be contained within the frame and permit the bees to move up, chew through the newspaper and eat white sugar in the case of an emergency. That emergency being the weather's too cold for the cluster to break and they've eaten all the honey within their cluster. That's why you want to put white sugar on top of a colony in the winter. And it also acts as a desiccant to keep the hive really dry, from what I've heard. That's the system for feeding the bees in the winter. That's the system for feeding them in the summer. We'll give you an update this time next year after we've actually gone through a whole year with this system and see how it works. But I don't see why it wouldn't work that well. All right. Let's get down to business and we can start building one of these hives and we'll show you how to do every step. All right, let's do it to it. Yeah. Let's build some beehives, people. Everyone can have bees. Everybody can have bees. Everyone can have bees in their own backyard. It's really not that hard. And here's how to build a really nice hive to let the bees live in. Yeah. All right, enough. Enough of this. Enough of this. Oh my god. Are you doing thumbnail photos? Yeah. Are you doing thumbnail impersonations? Yeah. Wait, come here, do, do thumbnail impersonations. These are imperson impersonations of thumbnails. Really? Well, I think it's usually a woman, right? A woman Not doing this it? this time. It's a thumbnail. <laughs> oh, excuse me, I dropped my crowbar. Oh, yeah. Sometimes the thumbnail is just a lady. Just like Get some people. boobs. There's just boobs, and it's like, how do you use chopsticks video? And there's like 12 million views. And, and it was like posted yesterday. Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> It could, be completely, it could be completely unrelated to either of us. It could be a fucking pterodactyl <laughs> and a shark <laughs> battling to the death in okay. lava. That could be our thumbnail, and we'll get 12 million subscribers over, overnight. Yeah. Maybe that should be the thumbnail for this. Okay. A pterodactyl and a shark battling in a caldera volcano. Yeah. Okay. We're going to give that a try. With a bunch of boobs coming out of the volcano. 